Welcome to the Toolhound Learning Center, a set of resources to help you get started using Toolhound 5. As we saw in the import data video, you can preload inventory by uploading into Toolhound at the beginning of a project or implementation, or at any other point when you have lots of information to be added at once. In this video, we'll look at adding inventory to Toolhound manually. Now we will cover the day-to-day -day operation when you need to add a new type of tool or a few new pieces of inventory or restock consumables. There are three basic steps. Add the part numbers, add the IDs to identify your tools, adjust the inventory levels for non-unique inventory. We'll look at each one of these steps and show you some examples. Step 1. Add part numbers. In the Core Principles video, you learned that part numbers create your catalog of inventory and carry all the common characteristics of a type of tool, equipment, or asset. The first step in adding inventory to Toolhound is making sure the part numbers exist in your database. If you want to add any pick list references to your part numbers, such as a new manufacturer or vendor, add them first so they're available when you add the part. When adding new part numbers, set the visibility to the highest point in your location hierarchy so that all stocking points can use this same part number. This ensures standardization across your organization. Remember that part numbers will carry all the characteristics common to all items. So if the part requires a certification or training or has any service requirements, enter them here. If you're using the purchasing module, you can also set the levels for reordering. Step 2. Adding IDs. The next step in adding inventory is adding the asset IDs. For non-serialized inventory, only one ID is required. This is added on the part numbers page when you create the part. For serialized inventory, one ID is added for each unique asset. It's quicker to add the first unique ID from the Items tab of the Part Numbers page. When you're adding multiple items for the same part number, you can then copy that first record on the serialized items to add subsequent items. IDs are used for all transactions to identify inventory, whether it be serialized or non-serialized. IDs are used for issues and returns and transfers as well as other types of transactions. Step 3. Adjust Inventory. For bulk and consumable inventory, you need to specify the quantity using an inventory adjustment. Remember that non-stock inventory doesn't carry quantities and serialized inventory always has a quantity on hand of either 1 or 0. Let's look at adding a new consumable to inventory. First, let's add the part number. Under Inventory, open the Part Numbers page. Click Plus to add a new record. Type the part number and enter the description. Then set the inventory type. Enter the primary ID. Set the visibility and specify any other information for the part. Then click Save. Now we'll set the quantity. Under Inventory, open the Adjust Inventory page. Click Plus to add a new record. Select the stocking point if it's not already populated and enter the item ID. Type the quantity and add a reason. If you have access, enter the cost. Then click Save. Now we'll look at adding a new bulk part. Start by adding the part. On the Part Numbers page, click Plus to add a new record. Type the part number and the description. Select the inventory type and type the primary ID. Set the visibility, then specify any other information for the part. 
Click Save. Next, we'll add the quantity. On the Adjust Inventory page, click Plus to add a new record. Select the stocking point and type the item ID. Enter the quantity and the reason for the adjustment. If you have access, enter the cost. Then click Save. Finally, let's see how to add new serialized inventory. In this example, we will add three new items for a serialized part. On the Part Numbers page, click Plus to add a new record. Type the part number and enter the description. When you set the inventory type, note that the primary ID disappears. Set the visibility. Enter any other information for the part number. Then click Save. Select the Items tab, and at the top left, click Add Items. This opens the Serialized Items page. Type the primary ID. Select the stocking point if required, then set the status to In Stock, and click Save. To add a second, click Repeat on the toolbar. Enter the primary ID for the second item, set the status to In Stock, and click Save. Click Repeat again on the toolbar to add the third item. Type the primary ID, set the status to In Stock, and click Save. So let's review. Step 1 is add the part number. This is where you enter the information common to all items, including pick list references, service requirements, reordering levels. For non-serialized inventory, this also includes the primary ID. Step 2, add the IDs. For serialized inventory, there is one ID per item. As mentioned, other inventory types have one primary ID set at the part number level. Step 3 is adjust the inventory. This is for non serialized inventory only. Thanks for watching this video from the Toolhound Learning Center.